Welcome back, everybody. And hey, it's almost Christmas of 2021. Maybe Santa's going to be good to you and you're going to get a thermal typewriter or maybe you're interested in using rolls of paper to type on because you got so much to talk about, to write about, that you don't want to be interrupted by stopping at the end of a page to change out the paper. And uh, we've covered on this channel before various ways of making holders for rolls of paper. I have a lot of different examples. Uh, one of my more recent uh, versions of the paper roll holder I crafted from some kind of a store-bought pizza box lid and it's kind of flimsy. The cardboard is rather thin but I poked two holes in the sides and I'm using this eight and a half inch wide roll of EKG paper it has a little quarter inch grid pattern on it and I'm using like a bamboo skewer through the center of the core of the paper through the two holes in the sides of the box that I turned into a little carton for holding the holder. And one of the things that I was missing on this design was I wanted a tear strip to be able to tear the paper off easily. And so I tore off one of these little metal serrated strips out of a box of aluminum foil or whatever and I glued it on here but it wasn't really positioned all that well. Also the box here is so flimsy that this strip doesn't really stay straight and so when you try to tear the paper off it doesn't really tear very well just because the box is so flimsy. Here's a couple other uh, versions of the paper roll holder. This one is a little bit more involved. This uses three quarter inch square poplar sticks, the kind you get at the, a lot of the hardware stores here in the United States. Some angle brackets, a brass rod. There's actually two brass rods. One fits inside the other through the core of the roll of paper. And then this one I did put a strip of plywood down here and glued on a one of those aluminum foil tear strips. This is actually a pretty nice one, but uh, you know, it's kind of big. It actually has a nice footprint. It doesn't slide around much. Here's another example of a paper roll holder. This is a four and an eighth, four and a quarter inch roll of thermal paper, maybe more for poetry or typecast blogging where you want to keep the columns narrow and the letters bigger on your blog. This one was just made of bent wire. This is that green plastic coated clothesline wire that you get at the hardware stores. And I just bent a couple little triangular legs and so it sits flat like that. Pretty good. There's no tear strip obviously. And when you run out of paper you have to kind of unbend the wire to get it out. So there's a lot of different ways to do these paper roll holders. So there's also these narrow rolls of paper that will fit into these little sandwich baggy boxes. And this one is so simple. There's virtually no modification required. I just cut a little bit more out of the opening where the baggies pull out and permits this four and one eighth inch wide thermal paper to fit in here quite nicely, although there is no tear strip, but I could probably install one. So naturally, if you're in the kitchen a lot this time of year, maybe you're doing a lot of cooking or whatever, or like in my case, my wife is doing most of the cooking. But anyways, so she ended up using up this box of saran wrap. This is actually glad wrap. But uh, anyway, I thought you know, this would make a nice box for thermal typewriter paper. There is a nice serrated tear strip in the lid. But the problem is with this box, it's a little too wide. Eight and a half inch wide paper. The box is probably closer to 13 inches or whatever, 14 inches maybe. So I thought what we'd do is we'd cut the box down to make it a more appropriate size. So let's get busy and do that, shall we? Stay tuned. Well, it's always a good idea to verify the size of the roll of paper before we start. And I said earlier it was eight and, eight and a half inches. It's actually eight and a quarter inches wide. Great. Good thing we checked it, right? So, what we're going to have to do here is I'm going to open up the carton and fold it out flat and we can mark the eight and a quarter plus how much leeway I'll need on either side. I'm figuring about a half inch on either side. So that'll be a nine and a quarter inches wide. I'm going to try to carefully open up this carton and we're going to seal the carton back up with a hot glue gun and open up the lid also. 
So this reminds me back in high school in the early 1970s, I took drafting class and one of our assignments was to take apart a carton or a box and draw the entire pattern, including the folds and everything, which was a good experiment. Nine and a quarter inches. Make a couple reference marks. So what I'm going to do is mark where the end of the inside of the box has to be, like that. So now we have to sort of reproduce these flaps here so that it will close back up and make it shorter. And so the easiest way to do this, I think, we'll see how easy it is when I'm done, is I'm going to cut off each flap one at a time and just line it up and mark it on the cardboard where it needs to go. This little one is slightly tapered, so we have to keep that in mind. The more accurate you are with this, the better it's going to be. Okay, now for cutting the tear strip, you want to use a pair of Cutco scissors. Guaranteed for life. I bought my first pair of Cutco scissors in the middle 1980s. Just a couple years ago, I had them replaced for free. All right, there we go. Now we need to score these. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to transfer these line marks to the other side because I want to actually score the outside because the tabs have to be folded inwards so I want to pay the cardboard to split on the outside of the fold instead of the inside of the fold so let's see if I can do this one something like that so now that we have a couple ink marks we can make a line that will be the reference for where we want to score at. Now the trick on this is that we don't want to cut the cardboard, we want to just score it. Something like that. Well there we are. So now let's try folding it up and then we can glue it back together. Okay, just temporarily fold it up here. Something like that. Let's grab that roll of paper and just see how that fits in here. It looks like it's going to fit great. Hopefully my glue is warm enough. This is the high temperature hot glue gun. And it's uh, it takes longer to melt and it takes longer to harden. So there's the old philosophy that if a little bit is good, then a lot more has to be better. Okay, let's see. There it goes. We'll let those two cure for a little bit, and then we'll do the lid. Okay, I've folded over the flaps so they're on the outside of the box, so this will help ensure that they will close properly. Make sure you have the new stick ready to go here. And so like that. And by the way, this high temperature hot glue is hot. If you're doing this with small kids, make sure they don't burn their hands or fingers. It's pretty warm. And uh, I bent this um, tear strip a little bit wider so that it would clear the corner and fold over. Yes, if a little bit is good, a lot is better up to a certain point that is. And we will let them cure for a couple minutes. Watermelon not included, of course, but I don't necessarily think I actually need a, uh, a stick going through this because it looks to me like this will pull out and feed just fine like that. And now let's 
let's waste a little bit of this paper and see if indeed this will tear. Oh yeah. Nice. That's just what I wanted. A nice even tear strip and this closes up nice and tight, snug, so that, uh, you know, I can transport it without getting the paper dirty or damaged or whatever. And also, if you want to, you could decorate the box uh, with whatever decorations you want and make it more customized to your typing taste. Now, I happen to have some of this self-adhesive shelf liner. This is vinyl plastic shelf liner. comes in rolls at your local hardware store. And I was thinking maybe I could just stick on some pieces and make this more of kind of a black looking box instead of advertising uh, cling wrap. Might be kind of cool. Well, here we go with the finished version. I've reinforced the vinyl adhesive shelf liner stuff with ProGaff gaffer's tape, which is my usual material for making cameras, uh, quickly made cameras. So what I did is I also have the hinge inside the cardboard uh, reinforced so it'll open and close repeatedly without wearing out, hopefully. And I've put on some of this vinyl adhesive lettering just to make it kind of snazzy, but there you go. A quick and easy way to make a cardboard holder for your roll paper, either thermal or regular paper, and with a tear strip. Reinforced so it'll tear the paper off nicely. Like that. Well, this was a real simple craft project, and the whole purpose, of course, is just to enable you to use these tools of typewriters more effectively. Some of us have really discovered the joy of using rolls of paper for endless typing, uninterrupted by changes of pages of sheets of paper. Not just for thermal typewriters, of course, but regular rolls of paper, which you can get at craft stores and office supply stores. Regular rolls of paper are really great, too, for regular typewriters, but this is just another idea for being creative, and I wish you guys the best in your pursuit of being creative and using words for creativity. And I also wish you the very best in this holiday season and in the next year to come. Until next time, have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye for now.